राशि चार्ट लग्न चार्ट चलित चार्ट भाव चार्ट नवांश चार्ट माय गॉड सो मेनी चार्ट सस्तियांश दशांश चार्ट सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इग्नोर टॉपिक्स ऑफ एस्ट्रोलॉजी दैट इज भाव चलित चार्ट ओके सो टुडे वी विल डिस्पेल ऑल द कंफ्यूजन्स व्हिच इज देयर रिलेटेड टू भाव चलित चार्ट एंड वी विल आल्सो सी हाउ टू एनालाइज द भाव चार्ट ओके and before i uh, speak anything uh, i would like to say that uh, there is there are different types of bhava charts which uh, you can use and there are many of course and different softwares will give you different calculations for different bhava charts okay now it is not possible for one uh, human being like me to know everything about all bhava charts of all different softwares okay so jehora or uh, there is you know shri jyoti star or whatever it is i i know only one or two softwares and i use only from them okay so you can use the one which i use and this is for free you can go to astrosage.com and you can make a free horoscope and there you can get this uh, which i will show you now okay now uh, am i saying that this is the only one which works no i'm not saying that there are many other charts which work uh, different types of bhava charts but my knowledge is limited and restricted to this chart which i will show you now okay so if you ask me questions about other bhava charts i will not be able to answer because i do not know and i do not uh, entertain topics which i do not know <laughs> okay and it's not that this is the best but i have seen in my experience in last 15 20 years that i have been using this consistently and it uh, gives fantastic results okay so therefore i am not claiming that this is the best chart or this is the only way you can do you can do if you have other ways but if you want to learn from me and from this video then you can try using this if you are like totally new then you can use this okay or else you can use something else also so now i'll share my screen so let's see what is a bhav chart so first let us see what is a lagna chart okay so this is the lagna chart which you get uh, in this uh, in this report at page number this is page number 3 i guess ah uh, this is page number 3 okay so this is what you get uh, you see these are birth details 17 january 1976 this is a mail and 921 am okay and this is the lagna chart okay lagna chart means this is the ascendant chart this is the rising lagna is the first house rising okay so many of you have been asking me questions related to moon chart lagna chart so this shows you are not uh, clear with the basics and this is a bit advanced astrology concept so therefore i would highly 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 request that you go to my astrology basics playlist and watch you know lagna ascendant moon and all this moon chart and all this otherwise it doesn't make sense for me to repeat all this here but i will still do that shortly so this is the ascendant chart this is lagna chart so ascendant chart shows which sign is rising okay so this is number 11 this is the sign of aquarius so this is a aquarius rising if you see here asc aquarius is written shatabhisha this is the ascendant nakshatra second pada okay and then you see this is the navamsha chart about which we will discuss some other time today's topic is not denied so now this is lagna chart or it is also known as rashi chart these are two same names okay or ascendant chart i am repeating many times people are asking what is lagna and what is rashi both are the same these these actually show the zodiac sign numbers which are there in these houses not exactly but beginning you can learn like this okay so this is the second house which uh, has pisces then third house has Aries, then fourth house has Taurus, and so and so twelfth house has Capricorn. Number ten. So these are not houses; these are sign numbers. Okay, so most of you would be aware of this. So this is the first house. Okay, now uh, this is the Lagna or the Rashi. Very clear with that. Okay, no confusions. Then we have something uh, known as Moon Moon chart, Chandra Lagna. Okay. Chandra Lagna is uh, Chandra Kundli, which means you put Moon as the first house. So imagine you uh, make Cancer as the ascendant and read, that, read this chart. Then Saturn Moon will be in the first house. Sun Mercury, because this is seven houses from the Moon, so then Sun Mercury will go here in the seventh house. Okay. 
so that is moon chart so moon chart is used to see the mental bend of the person and how society influences the person okay which is also not the topic of today but many times people get confused between lagna rashi chandra and bhav okay so therefore i am dispelling these confusions here so then this is the chandra kundali chandra lagna and in kali yuga because most of the things are externally oriented people are more and more wanting resources externally rather than inner peace so therefore in kali yuga unanimously the ascendant chart the uh, lagna chart is the most important it is more important than chandra lagna okay chandra kundali which means this first house is more important than uh, cancer okay aquarius is more important than cancer and all transits must be seen from aquarius absolutely no doubt about it no confusions no darkness here very clear with that okay see astrology is a science it's not hodgepodge many times people make astrology like a hodgepodge you know it's like a mess so oh, this chart that chart no every chart has a specific purpose so if you use it for that it becomes very scientific and you get very accurate predictions so if your predictions are wrong it's not because astrology doesn't work it means you are not able to use that which works okay in which particular in that particular area so now let us go to what a bhava chart is so how do you understand what is a bhava chart so imagine like this uh, you live in new delhi india you have your house your home there okay <clears throat> and uh, you are staying in europe like i am staying in germany here and suppose i want to go to new delhi okay so then what do i do first i will take a flight from either munich or frankfurt in germany and then fly to either mumbai or new delhi international airport okay but uh, i reach new delhi or maybe i reach mumbai but then uh, do i reach my home well not exactly right because my home is inside delhi somewhere maybe <laughs> but my home is not the uh, airport all right my home may be somewhere anywhere in delhi connaught place or anywhere i stayed in vikaspuri recently <laughs> so uh, in amanji's house so maybe my house is there my home is there or maybe my home is in chanakya puri okay so this is exactly like that which means i have reached india i have reached delhi but i have not reached my home okay so bhav chart tells you the house which a planet is in okay so let me let me give you a very quick example by which you will understand okay so now you see this ascendant degree is 11 okay if you check this is ascendant degree and uh, this example will uh, just uh, help you to understand what is a bhav chart you should not take this literally because this calculation has many facets and many variations to which if i start explaining it will go you know 8 to 10 hours so i cannot do that here but just understand like a dummy person okay just think that you don't know anything just listen now so suppose this is uh, the ascendant this is 11 degrees okay so although the ascendant is aquarius the sign in the ascendant is aquarius no doubt but it is not 0 degree aquarius it is 11 degree aquarius okay so therefore <clears throat> imagine uh, this person had come to me for a consultation some time back and uh this person was almost on the verge of crying actually okay because this person said sir my life is uh, going to be hellish i said why? why why do you think like that said oh because you know my son is in 12th house it is in maran karak sthan this problem is there that problem is there i will die my lagnesh is in 6th my uh, moon is in 6th oh my god my horoscope is terrible then i said no nothing of that sort will happen okay you will rise very high in life why did i say that that's what exactly i will explain here so uh, imagine uh, this is 11 degree as you see here so now you check where is sun this sun is in capricorn 2 degrees okay it is in capricorn no doubt but is it more than 11 degrees or less than 11 degrees well it is less than 11 degrees so actually in the bhava chart this is actually in capricorn but it is not in the 12th house because the 12th house of this chart starts uh, let's assume this is 30 degree okay this is the 12th house and assume this is like 10 degree and this is 20 degree and this is 30 degree so assume it starts uh, somewhere here you know 10 this is 11 so 11 or 10 somewhere and sun is barely in 2 degree so sun is somewhere here imagine like this okay 
just like a child you try to understand so then uh, sun is actually although it is in capricorn but 11 degree capricorn is the point where his 12th house starts okay because his ascendant is starting at 11 degree of aquarius so his 12th house ranges from 11 degree of aquarius and it goes up till uh, 11 degree of uh, i mean from 11 degree capricorn to 11 degree aquarius that is where his 12th house goes okay and at 11.14 his first house starts okay so therefore although sun is in capricorn but he has not reached the 12th house okay now does it mean that any planet which is more than the ascendant degree is in that house or is in the next house or any planet which is less than the ascendant degree is in the previous house well not exactly that is what i said to you earlier this calculation has many facets and i cannot keep explaining all this here it will take hours okay so long story cut short this is what is the bhava chart so bhava means house okay and there is nothing called as chalit so chalit means actually bhava chalit mostly it refers to chalit means bhava chalit okay bhava chalit means chalit means chalna as they say in hindi so it means to go somewhere so a planet has gone somewhere else from the rashi chart okay actually the planet never goes anywhere it stays there only but uh, for uh, people to understand they say this is bhava chalit okay which means in the bhav although it is in a particular sign the sign doesn't change but the house changes okay sometimes or most of the times okay and therefore now what what i said in the beginning was i used this uh, kp chart which is there so if you go go to this report which you get in astrosage this is almost 56 pages okay then uh, you can go to this uh, uh, this page number 44 i guess yeah so yeah this is page 44 so this is page 45 all right so page number 45 so try to understand what is happening here <clears throat> so um, this 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 chart is again 11 okay which which is pretty obvious so this is the same chart but this is the bhav chalit chart okay now in the earlier chart you saw that uh, or let me do one thing let me put this side by side so that i can show you together okay okay so then you will get rid of all your confusion so yeah so this this chart is the bhav chart okay so this chart is the lagna chart and this which you are seeing on the right is the bhav chart okay now forget all this how it comes and all that that cannot be explained here so now you see how do you check a bhav chart you you see the numbers which are written without brackets okay they are actually the lords which means when here you see 11 is written here that means who is the lord of the first house this this first house it is saturn okay sometimes the lordships change so for example sometimes here 11 is written sometimes it can be 10 or it can be 12 here in this same place okay and sometimes you will see in the bhav chart the lordships disappear okay that will also happen because of uh, houses and there are many other calculations which you have to understand astronomy for that then astrology then bhav madhya then calculation of equal houses and all this it's a very complex topic okay so keep that aside just see this so sometimes you will see lordships disappear and sometimes you will see one one number will appear two times so for example it can happen sometimes where you are seeing this 5 here you can see uh 4 here and 4 here also and you may see this 5 has disappeared so if a number disappears then uh, another number will replace okay so that number may be twice okay so these things you will see in the bhav charts uh, and then you sh you should not feel uh, weird the why this is happening it happens sometimes okay so <clears throat> then uh, now the planets which are there so the position of the planet should always be taken from the bhav chart okay so for example if this person asks me what will happen in my sun mahadasha okay so what do i see sun mahadasha i directly go to the bhav chart sun is the seventh lord sitting in the 11th house okay 11th house here okay <clears throat> why because uh, according to this calculation sun has not yet uh, reached the 12th house okay that dummy calculation which i told you in the beginning it's less so it hasn't reached so it's very complicated but this is how it works okay 
So just think of that dummy example and don't keep thinking, oh, why is it less or more? Just see what the software tells you, okay? In short, but if you want to learn in detail about astrology, then you can always go deep into this. So then Sun will give results of the 7th house and the 11th house. So if this person is uh, uh, born in 1976, so maybe 2002, so around that time he might get married when he's around 25, 26 because 7th house and 11th house can show marriage, okay? So what about this age, okay? 2002 to 2003. So this is a perfect time for this person to get married, okay? So... <clears throat> This is how you see the bhava chart. So now you will be confused. What are these two two numbers? Okay, I'll explain. So see, uh, let's take Saturn and Moon's example. Okay, other planets are same. Okay, or let's take Sun. Sun is better. So Sun here you see is in number ten. Okay, in the Lagna chart, which means it is in Capricorn. It was, it is, and it will always be in Capricorn. It will never come to Sagittarius. Okay, so when you see here. Uh, here, if you see, Sun is in the 11th house. So you'll be confused. What is this 9 and 10? Sun is in Capricorn or it is in Sagittarius? No. The house number is written without brackets. So Sun is in the 11th house and the sign is written in brackets. Okay. So that means Sun is in Capricorn in the 11th house. So don't think Sun, sun has shifted his sign and gone 10 days back and gone to Sagittarius. That's nonsense. That cannot happen. A planet... Uh, cannot do like that and especially sun never goes retrograde okay so uh, therefore uh, the signs will never change okay the houses will change and actually the houses also don't change but this chart lagna chart shows the zodiac sign so it appears as if it is in the 12th house okay but sun is not in the 12th house, 12th house it is in the 11th house okay so Therefore, the conclusion is whatever is written in the bracket is the zodiac sign and whatever is not written in the bracket, it is this house, okay? So now if somebody asks you, what is sun here? Sun is the uh, seventh lord. Why? Because in Rashi chart, Leo is in the seventh house. Uh, sorry, in the Bhav chart, Leo is in the seventh house, okay? Now here, the lordships do not change in this case, but sometimes uh, Leo may go to sixth house also or it may sometimes go to eighth house also, okay? So just keep that in mind, all right? And how will you know if sun is the 8th lord or 6th lord or 7th lord? Just check where is number 5, okay? So if number 5 was here without the bracket, then you know sun is the 6th lord. And if it was here without bracket, you would know sun was the 8th lord, okay? So then sun will give results of the 7th house here because Leo is falling in the 7th house of Bhav chart, okay? And then he's sitting in the 11th house. So no complications related to this. So now see Jupiter is in Pisces and also in second house. Okay, so this is the same here. You see 12, 12. Then Ketu is in Aries and in the third house. So this is same. Mars is the same. Okay. Mercury is same. Venus is same. Rahu is same. Okay. The difference is with Sun, Moon and Saturn. So you see here. Sun was in 12th. Now it has gone to 11th. But mind it again, Sun was and will always be in Capricorn. Now, Saturn and Moon was, is and always be, they will be in Cancer, okay? Because they are in the zodiac sign Cancer, but not in the 6th house. So, therefore, if you see here, uh, you will see that uh, they have gone to the 5th house, alright? So, this is how you can understand actually, okay? It has gone, don't think it has gone to Gemini. Never think like this. It is in Cancer, but in house number 5, okay? So, what is written in bracket is the sign and what is written outside is the house, okay? So, it's very simple actually. So, what about Mars? Where is Mars? Mars is in the 4th house in Taurus. That is how you know, okay? So, here when you see it appears, Saturn and Moon are in the 6th house, okay? So now the next controversy is about aspects. There is no controversy. It's very clear. The aspects have to be seen from the Lagna chart. Okay. You should not see aspects from Bhav chart. And conjunctions should also be seen from the Lagna chart, Rashi chart, not from Bhav chart. The placement should be seen from Bhav chart. And the dispositors also should be seen from the Bhav chart. All right. So. Aspects and conjunctions from Rashi, Lagna, Ascendant chart and placements and dispositors from the Bhava chart, right? So if somebody asks you, uh, let's take the example, 
of uh, if i ask you is uh, moon mercury aspecting each other in this chart you have to say yes now you may say oh but moon is here in the fifth house of bow chart and mercury is here it's not aspecting right no mercury and moon are aspecting each other because they are aspecting each other in the rashi chart the lagna chart okay <clears throat> but is moon in the uh, <clears throat> uh, this uh, sixth house no it is not it is in the fifth house all right and this is what the classics have said and uh, this is how i use it okay and uh, this is what is exactly bhava chalit chart so bhava chalit means a planet has moved to a particular house and it gives results of that particular house where it is sitting that is bhava chalit chart all right and now many of you will have many questions my planet has moved here there and uh, for that we have to do a detailed analysis so just because sun is moved to 11 thousand doesn't mean he will become a millionaire okay so therefore you please do a complete analysis and if you are new to astrology you should uh, either study astrology from basics spend 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 years or you should uh, get a consultation from somebody all right because you cannot understand a planet by uh, watching two videos it is not possible all right so that is it from my side i hope this cleared uh, all your uh, misconceptions and about bhav chali chart and lagna chart and chandra lagna and uh, rashi chart or whatever it is okay whatever you want to call it and if this does not work for you the kp system you can use some other bhav chart also i have no problem with that whatever works for you use it but i am not aware of how other softwares and other bhav charts work so i will not be able to answer those questions okay thank you very much and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want to know more on the ascendance i will put the playlist somewhere here you can watch them okay thank you very much uh, and if you want a consultation please go to the website down below for reading with me and god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him